Hey guys! So I'm going to try to be back. Um, sorry, I'm on my laptop, so things are moving. Oh. Um, anyway, um, so I left YouTube. I, I mean, I didn't like formally leave or whatever, but I became less inclined to make videos. I think just because I was starting to get a little bit bored um, and distracted with school and that sort of thing. Um, I tried blogging for a little bit, but I've never been good at blogging. Um, if you care, um, the blog is thornthewitch.wordpress.com. Um, I think I write in it maybe once every couple of months, and I've transported all of my old material from a previous blog onto it, so if you were following me on Blogger at any point, um, and that was a great thrill, you can follow me again at Thorn the Witch, and you'll see a lot of the same content. Um, but actually, some of my more meaningful online interactions have been coming through Instagram lately, which was very surprising because there are no videos or uh, there's very little text exchange, right? But I've actually met several people from real life through Instagram and found people in my area, and that's been a fun medium. So if you're on Instagram and you care about the fact that I'm on Instagram, you can follow me at Saint Joan of Snark. Um, and Saint is the abbreviation, so it's S-T-J-O-A-N-O-F-S-N-A-R-K. So, um, and what thrills await you, should you choose to do that. So, anyway, it's a lot of pictures of Oliver, and lots of witch stuff, and occasionally pictures of me out being intoxicated, <laughs> etc. Um, so, yes. Anyway, um... I thought I would, um, I guess this is an update video because they're all kind of updates, but I wanted to tell you about what I've been working on the last, the last well, for the, this past summer, I guess, and into the year. So, as I've said before, um, I have dropped the, um, the evangelical focus of my degree and just said, screw it all, and I'm not going on to a PhD program anyway, so who gives a shit? So let's talk about witches, right? Which my advisor thinks is great. The rest of the department, um, I can generally speaking get away with what I want because I'm a good student, but, um, I'm still kind of odd, I guess. Anyway, um, so what I'm doing, I am looking at... Um, what I think of as the most recent backlash against Wicca, right, like, since, since Gardner, there have been people freaking out about Wicca for whatever reason, and I'm talking specifically when I mean these backlashes about, um, people coming out as different kinds of witches, or even different kinds of Wiccans, and talking about how, oh, Gardner's a fraud, he's a sexual pervert, he's made all this up, etc., and we have the real mysteries. We are the real witches, right? This happens... This happens at least once a decade. And anyway, um, so the most recent backlash, and that, that's probably not the best term, but that's why I'm thinking of it right now, um, is coming from... Um, uh, coming again um, from, you know, the, this camp of, of traditional witchcraft. And I don't say that... I don't... I'm not doing the scare quote things with my fingers to be ironic or dismissive, um, but just because that's a really ambiguous term, right? I've said in previous videos that witchcraft means really different things depending on who you are and where you're located, what time period you're in, etc. So it's not really helpful to think about traditional witchcraft without giving it a context. So when I'm using that term here, I'm talking about people like Peter Padden and Michael Howard and Robert Cochran, um, Christian Day to an extent, these folks who are publishing books um, obviously, Robert Cochran was active several decades ago, but people using Cochran now and publishing about him subsequently, um, particularly people like Michael Howard um, and um, recently Raven Grimassi, right? These are people who are coming out and they're writing about um, traditional witchcraft, old world witchcraft, um, various kinds of hereditary and family type traditions. Um, especially things that come through the clan of Tubal Cain, um, and, um, you know, this is Cochran, uh, Roebuck, this, these kinds of groups, if you guys have read these people, many of them publish with, and I'm going to mispronounce these because of whatnot, but, um, publishing with, like, Pendrig Publishing, Publishing House and Kappelbahn and, um, anyway, a lot of these small presses, and I'm interested in these folks coming out specifically... 
um, not just talking about their traditions, but specifically coming out as being non-Wiccan. That's what I'm interested in. Um, the fact that oftentimes you pick up these books and one of the first things that you read frequently is that um, Wicca is not real witchcraft or it's a lesser kind of witchcraft or something and then here's the real stuff, right? So here's an example. Um, this is Hedge Rider by Eric DeVries. I think my laptop is the one that reverses images. But anyway, very first paragraph. Often you hear so-called Wiccans and Pagans claim that they are witches, right, and there are quotation marks around these terms. They fight for the environment, freedom of religion, and other good things that will make this world a better place. However, when you ask them what witchcraft is, what it stands for, and what its most dearly held principles are, you get some vague story about the burning times, and words like responsibility and nature religion keep popping out. The word used most commonly is magic, with a K, which isn't supernatural, but supposedly proven by science. To the new seeker, they're weird, fluffy, new age bunch who don't seem to have any link to the ancient witches. So what is witchcraft really about? Um, and the tone in my voice comes from the fact that there are quotation marks everywhere uh, around those terms that I was using. Right, so these are writers who are coming out on behalf of traditional witchcraft and they're doing it specifically in opposition to Wicca, um, which I'm very fascinated by. Right, um, and I should add that I am doing this. Or I'm I'm doing this in so far as it's ever possible, from my secular scholarly position. Right, I'm doing this as a grad student and not as a Wiccan. Again, in so far as that is ever possible, um, and I'm I'm looking at um, reasons for this kind of dismissiveness against Wicca, and many, like, I, there have been plenty of videos floating around in the last couple of years on YouTube um, about these kinds of issues. So I, like, I already know the answers to some of these questions. I'm more interested, I guess, in, um, like, the root of some of these things, right? So, like, why is it significant that someone like Christian Day comes out and has a book, um, you know, why is it significant that he would start using the term warlock and specifically set himself up as non-Wiccan? Like, why does that matter so much? And why is, why is it that so many people are so responsive to that? Why is it that, um, like recently Michael Howard and some of these other folks are doing the same. Raven Gramassi, right, who for decades has been a specifically Wiccan writer, comes out and, you know, and at various points he's writing about his Italian um, family tradition, supposedly, um, also, but now, like, in 2010, I think it is, he released his most recent book on old world witchcraft, which is another kind of traditional witchcraft, which is somehow, um, more authentic than Wicca. So I'm exploring what these kinds of things mean. Um, I'm using a, a cabal of social theorists to help me explain this kind of stuff. Um, but entail, it entails me reading a whole lot. Um, so like I, in the last week, week and a half, I read um, Lee Morgan's A Deed Without a Name, for example. I'm using this. I'm using Forge of Two Balkane, Anne Finnan, which I'm probably saying wrong. Of course, Cochran, um, Peter Padden, right? Um, all kinds of hedge writer. Anyway, I have a pile of like 30 books downstairs, all from um, people describing themselves as traditional witches and setting themselves up consciously in opposition to Wicca, which is seen as being inauthentic witchcraft, essentially, right? Like, and the criticisms that people raise are that, um, well, Wicca is this New Age religion. It comes out of the same people who are interested in, like, the Aquarian Age, and there's this really bizarre sort of moral code called the Reed, and, well real witches are amoral, or, or something, right? Like, all these arguments are made, or Gardner made it all up, he was a sexual pervert, right? That's everywhere. Uh, Robert Cochran is, um, the word that Michael Howard uses is pathological in his hatred for Gerald Gardner. It comes up in almost every letter. He's got to take a crack at the Gardnerians. Um, and it, get, it gets to be kind of comical, but... Anyway, there's a lot of animosity for some of these writers. And others, like for Peter Padden, for example, um, who have Wiccan backgrounds, there's not animosity per se, but this inclination, and Peter, um, Peter, Christopher Penzak writes about this in The Mighty Dead in the intro, about how he 
considered leaving Wicca because there was something about it that just didn't have the sort of spiritual depth he needed. Um, and Padden and some of the others hint at that, where they were just hunting around and Wicca just wasn't suitable for whatever reason. Um, and anyway, what I'm finding, though, and if any of you guys have any insight or comment or want to yell at me or suggest books or whatever, um, what I'm finding is that these this material put out by so-called traditional witches, and again, I don't mean that to be dismissive, but people who describe themselves as traditional witches, what I'm finding is that it actually looks a lot like Wicca, right? Like there are eight Sabbaths, and there's a lord and a lady, and um, the tools overlap. Everybody's doing things in circles with four elements. Um, they don't strike me as being all that different. And the things that people are hung up on, um, like the reed and um, the threefold law, well, the reed and the threefold law don't exist in early forms of Wicca, right? Like, um, certainly they're everywhere in later forms, and Gardner does talk about um, variations on those things, right? But Read of the Witch A isn't published until 1975 and from a non Wiccan source, and it kind of gets assimilated. Um, so, this is the kind of stuff I'm interested in. I'm interested in how people set themselves up as being authentic, what that means, why they do it, and um, I'm fascinated at the fact that. Even though people go to such great lengths to distinguish themselves, it seems, at least from, again, as much of an outsider perspective as I can mangle, and definitely from a Gardnerian perspective, that they're not actually doing anything that's really all that different. Um, so that's what I've been doing with my summer. Um, it's been pretty cool to sit around and get to read stuff like this. Um, my day consists of listening to... Um, Peter Padden podcasts, and reading a lot of Sarah Lawless, and uh, Michael Howard, and um, folks that I'm interested in anyways, and now actually get to devote a lot of time to. Um, so that's what I'm doing. If you guys have any thoughts on traditional witchcraft versus Wicca, and I should say here that when I'm talking about Wicca in this particular context, I'm specifically talking about... Um, British initiatory Wicca. So I'm looking particularly at the Gardnerian tradition um, and particular forms of the Gardnerian tradition um, because obviously there are a lot of differences between traditional witchcraft as described by these folks and then what, for example, people like Silver Ravenwolf are doing, um, Scott Cunningham, folks that we would think of normally as Wiccan who are not coming from the same kind of backgrounds as like Valiente or Gardner or whatever. Um, so, um, anyway, it's, it's interesting. And I feel like I've been talking really fast, and I don't know if it's just because I'm trying to cram so much in or whatever, but that's what I'm doing. So I hope you all have been well, and I will see you next time. <laughs>